So, the new Sound on Sound magazine has just appeared through my letterbox. So what's going to be interesting in it today? Well, what I'm interested in is where it says, and just not the microphone then, I'll try not to, I'll try not to. What I'm interested in is technique. Down at the bottom and it says, all about parabolic reflectors, parabolic reflector microphones, it says. It means, and on page 64, this is what this is what we find. Everything you could possibly want to know, written by expert Mark Ferguson. I'm just look at my notes up there, so I'll make sure I don't go off track and ramble too much. So, as you might guess, a parabolic microphone it uses a parabolic parabolic reflector to reflect the sound that's coming into it into a focus where you put the actual microphone. So you're capturing it like a satellite dish. You're capturing the sound. You're capturing the sound over a wide area. That means you get lots of it, and then you focus it so that you can record it. And the amazing thing is, it's just so simple, but it just so works. What would you use it for? I don't think you're going to be using it in your music recording studio very much, but you would if you were a wildlife um, expert or interested in wildlife or professionally involved in wildlife. You'd use it to record. Birdsong. I mean, that's classic, isn't it? Everyone likes the sound of birdsong in the morning, as long as it's not too early. And it's almost like music. In fact, uh, who was it? Olivier Messiaen, the composer, French composer. He was interested in birdsong, and why not? Why not? So where does this come from? It comes from the olden days, and there was a reference in the article, but you need to read the article. <laughs> and it mentioned in ancient Greek days, I think it was, about a parabolic mirror, so uh, you could you could uh, you could collect light with this and focus the light, and you could burn something with it or set something on fire. Now, don't do this for any kind of inappropriate purpose. But I did see, <laughs> I did see at my daughter's school a few years ago, quite a few years ago, uh, they tried to do this, and they had um, I can't remember what they mounted it on, but it was a par parabola approximately, and they were using. This is just from my memory, so I, can, I might make a few mistakes. Um, aluminium foil, like you'd use in the kitchen to make the reflector. And they were trying to cook a hamburger <laughs> with it. And unfortunately, it wasn't working. I just think there wasn't enough sun, and the aluminium foil wasn't reflective enough. The, the parabola was quite on the large side. So a burning mirror, so you can do it with light, and you can do it with sound. So going back into history once again, this time a lot further back into the First World War period. So you've got enemy planes coming over from Europe into England and they intend to do some damage. What do the armed forces need to know about these planes? Well, firstly, they need to know when they're coming and they need to know where they're coming from. So before radar, how do you do this? And the answer is you build a great big concrete structure, which is a sound mirror, and it will reflect back the sound that's coming from those planes to an operator. And in this case, it's not parabolic because that would reflect the sound to a focus. It's spherical, so the operator is equipped with an ear trumpet and can move from side to side and detect the direction of these planes. So this sound mirror that I visited is in red car, apparently. You know, from the olden days, I remember it being in mask by the sea. That's mask. But perhaps the boundaries have changed, so I don't know. So... I took my children to see this, thinking that they would be interested, but in fact they were more interested in a, in a local cat. It's a cat, the more interested in the cat. <laughs> but anyway, we had a look at this and we experienced the sound mirror. I'm going to show you a clip. I said it was parabolic, and I think I mentioned microphone as well. It was spherical and there was no microphone but an ear trumpet. Here's the clip. And the idea is that the sound of the aircraft, it strikes that and that acts as a, a, a and it almost, well, it's not like a, it's not a lens because it's a mirror, and a mirror is not a lens. But being parabolical in shape, it reflects sound to a focal point where it can be picked up by a microphone, and then you can detect the planes from a distance. So going back to bird song, well, it's not just birds, is it? Because all kinds of wildlife make all kinds of noises, and you know yourself when you're watching nature document documentaries, you'll be seeing a wildlife of some sort eating something and going. <laughs> like that. And what you'd like to think is that that sound has been captured in actuality by an, interfer an, by an interference tube microphone or by a parabolic reflector microphone. Well, it may have been, but I have to tell you, sometimes these sounds are enhanced or indeed 
possibly faked. One of the things with natural history is that we are we're trying to create what you think you should hear, but I'd say 99% of the time it's shot mute. But a purist would use the microphone, wouldn't they? That's, that's what I'd like to do if I were involved in that. So another use, I'm just looking at my notes, that's why I keep looking away. Another perfect use for the parabolic reflector microphone is for sports coverage. So you have a guy or a girl at the side of the pitch and they've got their parabolic reflector microphone and they can handle it like that with handles and they can point it at what's going on on the pitch. Now this has the side effect that the players quite often use foul language. <laughs> so there's no solution that comes without its own problems. And you probably won't see this so much in the UK, but I think in American sport you will see it more. Not that I watch much American sport, but I have seen it and I have seen these parabolic reflector microphones in use on the telly. <laughs> I have some experience of my own of the parabolic reflector microphone, and this was at a, a trade show. Um, I forget which one, but once again, this was a few years ago. And we used to get some fantastic trade shows in, in London with every item of audio equipment you could possibly imagine from every manufacturer. And these were really wonderful to go to. This is before the, day of the uh, days of the internet. So this kind of information was harder to find. And I think it was Canford Audio. I think it was their stand that I visited. And if it wasn't, well, I'll still give them a shout out because they keep a good range of stuff and they don't pay me to say that. I think it was their stand where they had a parabolic reflector microphone and they'd connected it to a preamp and a headphone amp and a pair of headphones. So you could put on these headphones, hold the microphone and steer it around like that. I'm going to say it was just phenomenal what you could pick up with that mic. You're picking up people's private conversations from 20 metres away. And in fact, it's a bit embarrassing that you're listening to people that they don't know, but they're being eavesdropped upon. So I didn't, uh, I didn't spend very long doing that, but it certainly convinced me of the power of this gadget. Where do you get one of these? Well, go on the internet and you'll find manufacturers in, involved in this kind of work. One is, I'll put some links in the description. One is Tilinga and another one is Wildtronics. And there are possibly more. How much are you going to pay? In the article, I didn't check this in detail, but in the article in Sound on Sound magazine, have I, have I just, have I plugged it enough? Yeah, they don't pay me for this, you know. Um, in the article, it says 350 Great British pounds to 1,000 pounds or more. You might be tempted to make your own at these, uh, these prices. I'm, certain, I'm, I'm sure that is not impossible. So I said you wouldn't be using it in your music recording studio. Well, maybe you would as an alternative sound texture. I mean, why, why not? These things are available. Why not use them? The problem is going to be in the sound quality that you're getting. And I think it's understandable that the sound quality is not going to be perfect. And in particular, low frequency is going to be limited by the size of the dish. I mean, if the dish is like that, or like that, or like, like that, I nearly knocked my other microphone over. It's limited by the size of the dish because sound, um, if I put it this way, sound has a certain wavelength, whatever the frequency is, there's a certain wavelength. And if an object is smaller than the wavelength of that sound, the sound doesn't notice it. It just goes straight past as though it's not there or it isn't affected by it. So if your dish is that big, straighten my hands up. Oh, yeah, that's better. That's better, isn't it? <laughs> if your dish is that big and the wavelength of sound is that big, well, you might just capture some of it. But if the wavelength of sound is bigger than that significantly, you'll, you'll just lose those frequencies. So the low frequency is limited by the size of the dish. And I think in the article it gave a figure and it was several hundred hertz. And oddly enough, the, the, the high frequencies are limited as well, which you wouldn't really think that, that would happen. But apparently what happens is the, par the parabola has a what seems to be known as the globular focus, the globular focus. I bet that's on Wikipedia if you look it up. And apparently the size of that, I can't remember whether it increases or decreases, but whatever it is, it causes a loss of the high frequencies. But, you know, what you do get you're not going to be get, getting it any other way, even with an interference tube microphone. You're not going to get that, that reaching power of the parabola. So where would you go to get involved in this kind of thing? Well, you could 
think about joining the Wildlife Recording Society, which is www.wildlife-sound.com. So whether this just exists in the United Kingdom or whether it's worldwide, I haven't checked. But I'm sure if it exists here, it exists or equivalents exist elsewhere. So there's something for you to look up if you're interested. It does mention in the article, <laughs> I don't think I'd have gone this far my, myself, but obviously this, this, this person is a, an expert in the topic. Recording in stereo. So why wouldn't you want to do that? You've got this lovely bird song coming in. Maybe it's a whole like flock of birds in a tree or something like that, and you want to get some sort of imaging going on. Well, obviously you'd want to do that. And so the suggestion is you can divide the dish You can divide the dish and then you can put the microphones, two, you, will need, you will need two microphones, on either side, I, I presume still in the focus area. Or it did, the article did suggest maybe you could just use the centre mic and then uh, clip two mics to the outside to get like a focused image, which would be mono, and then get some stereo ambience at the same time. And because they would move with the parabola where, wherever you aim it, that would keep the image in uh, good perspective. So yeah, I'd try that. But... What I'd really like to try for stereo, wouldn't it be great to have two of these parabolic reflector microphones, at £1,000 each, <laughs> and then mount them 10 metres apart and just see what you get from that? Honestly, I'd just love to hear that. And it's a why not. <sighs> Someone sent me an email. It's a why not if I could afford it. So that's it. That's what in what's interesting me in Sound on Sound this month. Not that that's the only thing that's interesting me, but that's what caught my attention. Okay, and here is uh, sound on sound as well. And do you recognise? Do you recognise this this guy here? <laughs> that's me on the Sound on Sound podcast. I'm talking about gain staging in four episodes. So if you want to learn about gain staging, soundonsound.com. Go to the podcast, and you can listen to me rabbiting on about this interesting topic for hours, literally hours. That'll do for today. See you soon.